me being like, we. This meeting is being recorded. <laughs> okay, I think this is a good. This is a good spot to kick off. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, this is the eighth uh, 444 call. Posted the agenda in the chat here. Um, as always, some spec updates, um, DevNet updates, and then uh, we have some updates on the builder side as well today. Um, so hopefully we can cover those. Um, to kick off, uh, we had this issue from the last call, um, Daplines issue around uh, old finalized data, whether we wanna consider it available. Um, there's been some movement on this in the past few days. Um, I, I see Danny, you're the last person here, I think, who's commented. Do you want to give a quick update on where, where things are at? I think Micah actually commented. I haven't read that yet. Um, oh, he's not yeah. here, though, right? Okay. okay so I think there's a, I think there's like general directional agreement on what to do here. One would be first and foremost to not add the complexity of the unbound um, DA requirement and then it's a matter of <clears throat> do you by default think that data is not available if you can't get it past that window if you need to um, and thus don't do reorgs or do you by default think that it's available um, there's like kind of a security and ux trade-off here um, i think one of the big i think people generally want to by default assume false but then if you're past this window um, if you don't do an additional trade-off at that point you're like kind of have some trouble uh, catching up. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think from a security standpoint, if you haven't been in sync for 20, 30 days, uh, you actually should get a recent piece of uh, information from the network because of the weak subjectivity period. Um, so like, that's not a terrible security trade-off, um, but in, you know, most cases you could just sync the network from there and be safe and be fine and find the head. So it's like uh, a bit, of, a bit of a, a trade-off. Although Micah, Micah jumps in and says, like, well, this is exactly what it should be uh, because of the the security issue with weak subjectivity. So um, I can circle back on that and make sure there's no final input between now and Thursday, and then try to make a make a final call on Thursday. Um, I think fortunately this is not blocking core development. This is like more on the edge case side and we've decided certainly to go from on, not in the complex direction of the unbound window. So Thursday, reasonable, unless there's comments right now where we could try to hash some stuff out. I don't know if all the relevant parties that have been on this thread are here. Uh, but yeah, if, and if anybody has some additional information or sees the trade-off differently than I, uh, I'd love to hear. Thanks for, for the update, anyone? Here have some comments or thoughts. Okay, so yeah, let's try and uh, get this resolved by uh, the CL call this week. Yeah, I'll, I'll ping um, in a public channel that pretty much we're like, want final comments on this for Thursday. Sounds good. Um, sweet. The next one also, also a Dap Lion issue that we, uh, I think there had been nothing since on the last call, since like when we discussed this, and there hasn't been another update on it yet, but basically the um, the blog the blocks by root edge case. Um, I know, yeah. Basically, Sean was the last one to comment two weeks ago. Um, not sure if there's any updates there or a way to move it forward, given it's been kind of stale. Um, I felt that line actually opened a PR for this. It's um three one five four. Oh, you're right. thirteen hours ago. Okay, nice. I missed that. Um, okay. So I guess yeah. Then we can just review this PR. I don't know if anyone has any comments on it already, or if, given it's pretty new, I suspect most folks have not had a chance to look into it. Okay, so uh, people can look at that uh, async. 
And then the last bit on the spec, uh, Xiaowei had some uh, testing updates uh, with regards to uh, the trusted setup. Um, I don't know, Xiaowei on the call? No. Um, she is. Oh, is she? Sorry. Oh, uh, yes. Yes. Hello. Yes. Nice. Uh, so, hey, yeah, so the KDG uh, ceremony will generate the G2 trusted setup with 65 elements. And previously we used the um, four, like 4,000 and, and 96 elements for the main set. Pre, uh, preset and four elements for the minimal preset, which is like uh, it, it won't be matching uh, to the the main setup. So now we use uh, set it to sixty five for the testing trusted setup. So I think it won't change the definite consensus, but uh, it seems it would be helpful for the KCG library to uh, to use the 65 uh, right now. So just need some uh, quick reviews and I think we can merge it in the spec release this week. Yeah, and we discussed this with Dankrad and George and other people on the library side and that's definitely what they want. And there's not really a big trade-off and just keeping it to the size of the ceremony. Cool, and I guess if, so if we start the DevNet, we should use these new values. I get, like, I guess what's the impact of, if we start DevNet three with the old size, obviously I should be breaks everything to change, change this value. Um, is, I guess, is that a correct assumption? This is something you need to send I thought this was just I thought this was just for the spec tests. Yes. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, got it, got it, okay. Okay, sorry, my bad. Yeah, for DevNet, we want to use the production value of 4,096. Yeah. Right, 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 that makes sense. Okay, Um. anything else on the specs? Every call, the specs section is getting shorter, which is a very encouraging sign. We used to spend like 50 minutes just on this. Um, okay, um, next up then, uh, DevNet 3. I know uh, over the past couple of weeks, we've been trying to get it started with a minimal uh, set of clients. Um, I don't think that's happened yet. Um, so I guess I'm just curious to hear from the different implementations like, where things are at, um, are there any blockers? And um, yeah, we can we can go from there. I um, don't know if anyone wants wants to start. Otherwise, I can call people. Um, I can give an update on Prism side. So we're past all the spec tests. Um, I think I've implemented most of the sync stuff. So I'm waiting to test it. So I'll probably will just test it um, with multiple Prism nodes first to see how that works. I also posted like an interrupt um, in instruction on how to set up Prism and Git. So, um, but that's just one pair. So I'm, I'm trying to do multiple pairs right now. So yeah, if that goes well with, if I can do a sync with mul multiple Prism nodes, then I think for our end, we are clear for DevNet 3. Thanks. Uh, hi, uh, Bhavan from Lighthouse. Uh, so we are on a similar boat as Prism. We managed to uh, do local interrupt with uh, multiple Lighthouse nodes and multiple get nodes. And we, we were able to send blobs into this local testnet and it works. But uh, right now we are ironing out a few bugs and also we are testing sync as well locally. And I think we should be in a good place to start a local, uh, to start a DevNet pretty soon. It's like, we are just ironing out bugs right now. Thank you. Hey everyone from the uh, Lodestar side, um, we've been able to pass the alpha one hotfix two spec tests. 
we're um, able to run a Lodestar local only multi-node DevNet uh, with like a fake EL attached that can make blobs. So right now we're currently working on a Geth interop in CI right now, uh, but we're running into some issues with that. The latest uh, rebase Geth branch is again breaking for that interop. Um, and also the, um, well, the last commit that kind of worked for us uh, with the Geth interop was um, the one ending in zero Charlie Bravo seven. Uh, it runs successfully interop, but without any of the blob transactions. Um, what else? The blob transactions generated, generated using the C KZG library. It causes an invalid KZG commitment error in Geth. Um, seemingly as it might be that the KZG libraries are not interoperable right now. But we were able to actually interop with Ethereum JS. Um, got that to work with a blob transaction submitted between those. Do nice. we have an example blob um, where we're seeing that difference? I can I can look into why Go KZG is not accepting it. Yeah, I can um I can pass get Gajinder who's been testing this to pass along the information to you, Robert. Great, thank you. Where did you get the trusted setup? Like, are you maybe using different trusted setups? I don't know what what the current convention is there. Because currently they're all like test testing setups, right? So someone I don't know where they came from. They should have all been updated to use the consensus specs one, which uh I see. Um, but I did hear about uh, interoperability problems as well last week. Um, it seems that some of the wrappers are not updated. Uh, I tested GoKZG last week and. Uh, it's interoperable with a different library, uh, the Gnark one. So I think it's a wrapper problem. But yeah, yeah. if you can send the, uh, the the blob as well to me, it'd be great. I can check it out. Uh, Who is who's maintains the wrappers? Is that Dan? So it's still Dan? Uh, it's multiple people. So uh, for Node.js, it's Dan. For Nevermind, it's Alexi. Okay, so I guess we can loop them in if we get more mm -hmm. suspicious of that. Mm. Uh, yeah, uh, we, we, Nevermind, we just uh, uh, trust set up different from uh, that one from CKZG. If you use uh, the standard one, it will fail. Uh, well, but we can like think on that. Uh, um, never mind. Still, uh, is not syncing with. I guess uh, Prism network. We have some bugs, uh, but I hope we will uh, fix everything uh, during the next week. That's the state. Thanks. Any other? Oh, yeah, Andrew. Oh yeah. So so for Ethereum JS, um, as Phil mentioned, we we have. I've been working with Gajinder. He's kind of he actually is on both of our teams, so he's been very helpful with getting Lodestar Ethereum JS um, interop working. We have at least on our setup, been able to run um, ETHJS and Lodestar together and sync and send blob transactions. Um, here again, we're, we do have a blocker with the, um, the CKZG library. I mentioned this to Kev that the, uh, the verify KZG proof method that's in the CKZG library is not exposed by the wrapper. So I can't fully implement the pre-compile right now. Um, so that that's one blocker for us. I have it implemented as far as I can, but we can't we can't do that last proof verification of the two points that get provided um, in the input. So um, I have shifted today to start kind of looking at trying to maybe do some more interop. We, we had the same, I think Phil mentioned, we have this verify KZG proof error when we try to send our, we try to generate blob transactions using our code and send it to Geth and it, it rejects them with this KZG error. So um, that's one. Here and that maybe that's probably a, I'm assuming a KZG interop issue. 
Um, and I'm hoping to try to start working, maybe see if I can get Ethereum JS to hope maybe sync with Prism at some point this week. Um, we're still, our PR to pull in timestamp based hard forks is still in flight. Hoping that your gender and I will be able to get that merged in the next couple of days, because that will hopefully allow us to start trying to go on the latest DevNet 3 spec. But um, otherwise, um, we've made some good progress in the past week, just being able to generate blobs and at least sync with Lodestar. So that's that's promising. Nice. Uh, yeah, sorry, I was just going to ask. So Lodestar is using the NPM package as well? As far as I know, yeah, I, I think you'd have to confirm with, I mean, when I looked at it, it looked like the same one when I was doing my interop testing. Yeah, I believe that's correct. Okay, uh, I'll ping uh, Dan to update the NPM version, because I think that's basically the issue here, uh, that it's using an outdated version. Um, and the, yeah, if that's, not, if that's not the issue, then I'll just look into CKZG to see where the issues are. Besu is definitely not ready for DevNet 3. Uh, so far, what is done is parsing of the transactions from the network, the network payload. Uh, and that's basically it. Uh, so this week, hopefully, we will have somebody working on a transaction pool. And uh, we will start doing the KZG proof integration with the, C, with the J, KZG today, um, this week. But uh, definitely not ready for DevNet 3. Yeah, similar update for uh, Aragon. Um, progress, but um, not not ready yet. Okay, and I think that's everyone. Is there another team that has an update? Yeah. Hi. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, yeah. For Teku, oh, we are working on uh, storage, uh, and we have things pending on the network and syncing. So our goal is to basically start implementing the spec tests, see if they pass, and hopefully sometime in January to we'll start joining the DevNets. Sounds good. Any other team that I've missed? Uh, yes, I'm sorry from Grandina team. So we are not ready for the for the testing, however we uh, we got a bit more numbers on the different uh, elliptical backend libraries. Uh, I pasted the link in the uh, chat. And uh, yeah, the interesting thing is that uh, it could be something wrong with uh, our CKCG bindings, but we got a, a significantly better performance on uh, on verification uh, with Rust BLST. Implementation. So, is there? Uh, uh, I don't know. Maybe some somebody knows. Is, is there benchmarks on the CKG KZG without any bindings? Do we have those? I think uh, there are there are such benchmarks that you can run from CKZG without any bindings. Yes, I don't know if they do the operations you want it to do, but there is a benchmark tool. Okay, if, if anyone knows, uh, please uh, give a link uh, for that. And another interesting uh, uh, yeah, outcome is that, at least for uh, uh, proof generation, the parallelism is working pretty good with uh, little efforts. Uh, so I think it's possible to, to get really good results uh, with more efforts uh, for proof generation for multiple blobs at once. So that's uh, that's the results. Thanks. Thank you. Any other client updates? I think the only one we don't have an uh, update from is Nimbus right now. Oh. Yeah, and Henry, I see you're on the call. Do you want to give a quick update? Of, I saw there was like the initial PR for Nimbus. 
Um, yeah, sure. Um, um, so Nimbus has basically started over the last few weeks. Uh, I've been working on it with help from the Nimbus team. Um, not going to be ready for DevNet in the uh, well for at least a few weeks, but um, but basically the status is we've got some scaffolding in the core Nimbus repo. A bunch of basically most of the scaffolding I think is in place. Um, I'm working on the CKZG bindings right now, um, as those of you on that Telegram group have seen. Um, and I think once once that is done, which is basically today or latest tomorrow, um, I'll start wiring those calls into the um, into the core validation and gossip and and take it from there. So um, yeah, it's we've gotten a late start, but it's coming along. Very cool. Okay, so it seems like there are definitely a couple of teams like getting close to DevNet, having like some single kind of combo interop running locally. Um, in terms of like next steps, like should we try and get a DevNet launched in the next week? Um, do people feel like we, we need a, a bit more time than that? Um, yeah, I, I guess I'm curious, you know, uh, Prism, Lodestar, uh, or Prism Lighthouse, you all seem like, almost ready um yeah what do you feel is is, is a good thing to, to aim for i feel like as we get towards the holiday there's probably like less people available so yeah. like if it was just us and lighthouse launching a death net by ourselves then it doesn't really make much sense so i don't know i feel like i i would prefer until early January, but yeah, I don't really feel strongly either way. I guess it's up to others. But Terrence, if it's up and running, wouldn't that make it easier for other people to join in? I mean, right now it seems like testing is a little awkward. If the if the desk DevNet was running, then wouldn't that make it easier? Yeah, yeah. I know that definitely. Yeah, that's a good point, right? Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I, I prefer if we can get it. Like, I was just gonna say, if we, I would prefer we can get if we can get it going next week with you know just a couple of clients, then I think it would be worth it. Yeah, like from from Lighthouse, we agree. Like uh, right now, we can like if we have some help from the DevOps team, like I think we can like uh, launch a DevNets maybe sometime early next week. Like. Th there are some bugs that we are ironing out, but I think that if we have something. Uh, that everybody can sort of try to connect to from their own client combinations, then it's definitely helpful. Even if there are bugs, if, even if the DevNet has bugs, like it'd still be helpful. Okay, so I guess, yeah, let's try and get it running. Um, and then the people think it's possible to get this done before the next call, like before Tuesday, or um, are we gonna need more time than that? I say let's shoot for it. Um, I mean, it's not a, it's not a certain thing, but it feels like we're really close. <laughs> yeah, I agree. And I think it would be good to like if we can leave for the holidays and have the DevNet running like in the background, and and even if it's not everyone on it, like it's just good for anyone who wants to test or whatnot. That it's yeah, it's there. Exactly. But... Okay, so let's try and let's try and get uh, at least a, a minimal. Oh. A question on that, I guess like. Just to make it a little bit more explicit, what's our sense of what the path is to get that DevNet up and running? Like it sounds like Prism, Lightheart, Lighthouse, um, and Geth are probably the closest, with maybe Nethermind and Lodestar and Ethereum JS. I mean, like, do we want to start with two? Do we want to start with three or four? How are people feeling about that? So Prism Geth has been our previous combination for DevNets, and we've only had that in the past. Um, that seems like the, the reasonable pair to get started now. Um, it would be nice to have um, another mind and Lighthouse also, if we can get those in. But um, I, I, I'd be fine setting it up with just a single pair, just to, again, help the others get yeah. testing. I think maybe um, like I do a... think... Oh, please, Terrence. Sorry, yeah. I do think Lighthouse is slightly more uh, ahead of us at this point, just because the, because they do test the multi nodes in terms of syncing. We haven't tested that, so yeah, feel free to um, replace Prism with Lighthouse to start as well. I guess it doesn't make really that, that much difference either one of them, but.
but yeah, just that I but I do want to point out the fact that we we haven't tested uh multi node syncing, which I I probably can test in the next few days. Yeah, I think that's fine with us. We, we are like as I said earlier, we're uh, ironing out uh, sync edge cases, but uh, I think we'll be good to go like maybe sometime early next week. Okay, so I think yeah, let's start lighthouse get. Seem like the two um, the two uh, most ready ones. Then we can add prism to that, so like prism get, and then we can add nethermind and you know try out nethermind lighthouse and nethermind prism. Um, I think if we have even like you know just lighthouse get up and running with like some infrastructure by uh, by next call, that's already a good start. And then maybe in the week after that, we can add prism and nethermind to it. Um, so I think yeah, if we if we didn't have like the four, um, the four clients in like the next two weeks or so, that would be that'd be really good. Yeah, I think this would be epic if we could get this out before Tuesday. Huge. Any, I guess, any other questions or concerns people have about getting this out? Um, Uh, I had one question about the CKCG library, but do we have uh, test vectors available? Sorry, I've been out for the last week and a half, so it's already been answered. Not available. Um, hello. Yeah, so there are test vectors for the blob generation, and I've just added some for the verified KCG proof uh, after uh, what if you're in JS told me um can link you to the test vectors um i can generate a uh a release schedule that just changes them into json files because uh, right now you have to do go run star.go uh, yeah that really helped thank you On the JS KZD wrapper, I also just pinged Dan in our company Slack, um, uh, just to like reemphasize that we want to cut a new release. Kevin, Kev, you think that that's likely to fix the issue? Yeah, I think that's the main issue there right now. Um, if not, then I can go into, because if Dan cuts a new release, I can run it against the test vectors, which work for Go KZG, and I can just quickly see that um, yeah. something KZG. We'll get that out today. All right, thanks. Sweet. Anything else on the DevNet? Okay, let's do it. Let's try to get a uh, couple clients running by next call and then um, a couple more by the end of next week. Um, sweet. Okay, uh, on the block, large block uh, testing, uh, Giorgio says uh, he couldn't make the call, but he gave a quick update uh, on the Discord saying that um, it's ready to run. EF DevOps is prepared. We're trying to do this tomorrow. Um, anyone else have comments or thoughts about this? All right, so hopefully we get yeah, a proper run then um, tomorrow. So, uh, and potentially some more during the week. Um, so then next week we can kind of review them and figure out um, if and how we want to approach mainnet uh, in January. Uh, next up, uh, Gabby had an update on the builder spec. Um, yeah, Gabby, and I see you posted, uh, you posted a HackMD in the agenda, do you want to take a minute or two to, to walk us through this? Yeah, sure. Hi, everyone. I am Gabi. Uh, I've been working on the on this uh, builder spec changes with Shimi. We are participating on the on the protocol fellowship, and this is our first time doing spec changes. So, yeah, any any feedback is appreciated. Um, yeah, the changes are not uh, super big, but we need to 
update the both the Beacon API to include the types for the 4.4.4. And we also need to do some changes on the build derived API uh, specs to, um, and yeah, those changes uh, are really well summary on the on APR, but to give a quick uh, overview, we needed to include the below KTG commitments on the fork, uh, fork version container, the signer, signer builder bid. This is the the container that is uh, returned by the get execution payload uh, from MVGUS. And then we also need to include the uh, a new endpoint uh, that we decide to do a version two for the submit blinded block to also include the block sidecar uh, with a new uh, signed beacon block and, and block sidecar uh, container. And, and yeah, the the one open question we had for for that uh, last uh, change was if uh, having this version two was uh, the way to to go because uh, we get some early feedback from MetaCrief that there was some preference for not reusing for reusing the existing API codes instead of uh, creating a version two. But then also Enrico suggests that uh, he he saw that yeah having a version two in this case makes sense. So that's one thing that uh, yeah having some feed, some other feedback uh, would be uh, great. Um, yeah, that, that's for the, the the questions. And finally, to mention some uh, action items that we we were thinking to to do going forward is implement these builder spec changes on the uh, that are left to be done on the lighthouse uh, code base. And then uh, once we have that uh, ready, generate some test vectors to share with the Flashbox uh, team to have some early. Uh, Early testing because uh, Sean from Lighthouse uh, shared with us that that the previously there was some some uh, issues with other forks. So having that that, that kind of uh, test early was a, a good thing to go to to have. So that's, that's everything. Uh, thank you, everyone. Cool. Thanks for thanks for sharing. Um, Alex had some comments in the chat. I don't know, Alex, anything else to add? Uh, yeah, I was just going to say that I think we can get away with a V1. Uh, I was looking at like the versioning rules, and basically they say we only want a new version if we basically break what's there, which we wouldn't do. At least we wouldn't need to do because we can just add this like metadata that says this is like a 4.4.4 block versus something else. Um, either way, generally from looking at this document, it generally looks good, and I'll go review the PRs. And yeah, nice work. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, one well, last thing is that unfortunately Jimmy couldn't make it because of the time zone, but yeah, we've been working in parallel on this. So yeah, thank you. Of course. Anything else on the builder specs? Okay, um, last thing uh, I have is um, some, basically the the benchmarking stuff we talked about last week i don't know um if there's been any updates there that anyone wants to share um yeah basically the the pre-compile gas cost benchmarking um yeah so i think marius ran uh the benchmarks on his computer uh and it in the worst case we got around 60k uh, but this is like the the worst case and i'm thinking maybe we should reevaluate how we do the pre-compile um benchmarking like maybe take ten thousand iterations of the average case um does anyone so i think I, to I... add here like the worst case here doesn't mean it's the worst case in terms of the data but it's just that uh, like on the same data, it has a slight distribution of run times, right? Okay. Yeah. And that's because of garbage collection rather than anything to do with the actual computation. Right. So there's no way you could provoke like it to do like 
uh, 100 times the worst case if you include the pre-compiler 100 times. I wish we had Marius or Mero or Martin uh, on the call. Um, I feel like they probably have a good intuition for like what's a reasonable, yeah, what's a reasonable part of the, the distribution to target. Um, but yeah, we can have that conversation offline. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I guess yeah. we're also waiting for our clients to um, post what their benchmarks are. Um, I think most other languages also has a garbage collection, so it might yeah. be around the same results but from Rust. And... Cool. And uh, like I was saying, Nethermind has uh, some intermediate uh, results that they can post later. So um, yeah, it'll be good to have a sanity check across at least two, two clients. Sweet. Anything else on that front? Okay, anything else anyone wanted to cover? Okay, well, we can wrap up here. Um, like we said last week, we'll have a call next week and that'll be the last one uh, this year. So yeah, thanks everyone and um, yeah, hopefully we can get this dev set uh, launched. Oh, yeah. I just want, I'm not going to be here next Tuesday because I'm getting surgery. Um, but I did want to just, and Danny's, Danny's going to be running the call because uh, I think Tim's not going to be here as well. But I did want to just say that um, like six months ago, we started this effort. I think it felt like a long shot that this would happen in like 2023. And now here we are six months later and we have every client like close to interopping sometime in January. And I think are gearing toward the place where we're all gonna be in person, uh, like to make that happen. Uh, and then have a like commitment at the core devs level to ship this as a fast follow, ideally in Q2 of next year. And like, I just wanna say, I've never worked on uh, Ethereum core development before, but that feels like an incredibly remarkable achievement for like six months. And I don't think that that would have been possible without everyone in this room, like showing up every Tuesday for the last six months to make this happen and like being super positive and super engaged. And um, I just want to say thank you to everyone. Um, I'm not going to get to say it next week. So like, thank you for all of your hard work. Um, it's been an honor and a joy to get to collaborate on this. And I'm really excited about um, bringing it to production and scaling Ethereum together in 2023. Thank you. I don't think we can end the call on a better note than that. Um, so yeah. Thanks, Jesse, for, for wrapping up this way. Um, thanks, everyone. And talk to you all in the, the Discord. See you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.